So undoubtedly, a lot of astrology is compatibility astrology, and there's different ways of going about that. You can just look at whether sun signs are compatible with each other or how they mesh together. Um, people, I think it's pretty commonly known that people know about Venus signs and Mars signs and that, how that's a big part. And the moon, Mer Mercury, and sun are also important parts of um, c determining compatibility in astrology. But there's this really major, kind of simple... Um, part of the chart which people overlook in this area and it's a really strong really clear indicator for um relationship compatibility and also like what a person will look for in a partner and what they expect from other people in general as well and so i just thought i'd go over that with you right now um and basically what it comes down to is the ascendant descendant axis and it's it's just something which time and time again people relate to a lot and they see very clearly in their lives but it seems like people not a lot of people just know about this um so basically your ascendant as you probably know is the self and the identity and how you approach things um, how you come off how you beginnings and stuff like that um, it also has to do a little bit with your mission in life and your purpose and then your descendant is about relationships and it's also how you see other people and also what you expect from other people especially in a relationship so it's it's sort of like the yin to your yang. Um, and, and again, so it's it's really important and um, indicative of what kind of person someone needs um, in a one-on-one -on -one relationship and, and what they expect from the other person. And I'll go through examples of ascendant-descendant axes, I guess, um, just to show you kind of how this plays out. Because, again, it's a really important factor when... Um, understanding what you or somebody else looks for in a partner, but also <clears throat> what you need and what you expect. And that's important to know too from um, your partner, what their ascendant descendant axis is and how they, how they perceive you and what they expect from you. Um, yeah, and so pretty much, of course, they're always opposite. The ascendant and descendant are always exactly 180 degrees apart. So they're always opposite. So I put this image here where you can see the pairings of, of opposite signs. So no matter who you are or what kind of chart you have, um, your ascendant descendant axis is going to be a pairing of one of these. And that sort of defines, at least in part, it defines your sort of relationship. And so from these six pairings of ascendant, or I guess you could say either six or 12, depending on how you, on how you look at it, um, from these pairings, you can sort of see these either six or 12, I guess six different um, types of relationships. Um, yeah, and again, they're always opposite. So they're always either two yang or masculine signs or they're two yin or feminine signs. And, um, and so it kind of makes you think about different things when you realize this. So like um, it might be possible that your partner's ascendant is exactly opposite yours so your your descendant is their ascendant and vice versa and then obviously that has a lot of um good flow and you know what you expect from your partner is what they are and then what they expect from their partners what you are so, so so that obviously works really well but um it's also common for the ascendant descendant axes not to match up exactly like that it's probably more common for them to be in different signs or different axes and, and that's okay too that can totally work too it just um it just depends so for example let's say let's say i'll just use my rising so let's say i'm i'm gemini rising so my descendant is sagittarius um so that means i would be attracted to and um especially in long term in a long-term situation i would need someone with sagittarian qualities um not only would i be attracted to that but also i would need that in a long-term situation and um yeah, it's just generally what I would sort of sub subconsciously expect from my partner and what I'd be attracted to. And that doesn't necessarily mean they have to be a sun sign Sagittarius. It could be that. Um, they just have to have some sort of Sagittarian role. So, for instance, um, that could just be that they're fiery. So, maybe um, a Gemini rising person might just be satisfied, satisfied with someone who has Aries and Leo placements, even though those, those aren't Sagittarius, they might be, they might fulfill the fiery role of the descendant since the descendant isn't a fire sign or since, um, or, you know, especially if, if like, let's just say, um, someone has like Aries and Leo mixed with like some mutable signs that would sort of fulfill 
a lot of the qualities of being both fiery and also easygoing and flexible and adventurous. So there would be a lot of traits there that would be reminiscent of Sagittarius, even though it doesn't necessarily have to be Sagittarius. But again, it, it could be very well someone who literally has placements there, and that's actually very common. So, um, and again, that's part of why people always relate to this as soon as I bring it up. So again, it doesn't have to be someone with planets in that sign, but a lot of times it is very literally someone with, you know, sun or moon or Venus or Mars or whatever. They might just have, um, like for my example, they might have a Sagittarian dominated personality with Sag rising or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, so then, and then depending on, you know, you have to obviously factor in their ascendant, descendant axis, but, um, but yeah, so I'll, I just thought I'd go through these six pairings and, um, just kind of explain what these general relationship, uh, archetypes are like. And, and you could sort of, um, once you get the general concept, you can kind of think for yourself about what each sign represents and, you know, what the themes are and, especially um, related to their axis or their opposite pairing. And then from there, it's more about the themes of each sign than it is the sign itself. And that's why the person doesn't necessarily have to have plants there, although they could. Um, you know, like, again, just to go over mine just um, real quick. So if my descendant is Sagittarius, I just would be attracted to, some, to someone adventurous, maybe you know, upbeat, maybe more confident than I am since that's a fire sign and I'm coming from at it from the air perspective, someone outgoing. Um, yeah, so anyway, so let me just get, go through these. So uh, first, let's look at Aries Libra. And that, again, you know, it doesn't matter which side we look at, the, at this from because it's, it's just sort of saying that if one person has ascendant in Aries or Libra and then descendant in either Aries or Libra their perspective of the relationship is going to be that one person is more of the leader and one person is the follower so so an uh, um, Aries ascendant person is going to see themselves as the leader in the relationship and they they like being the leader they like being the more confident one the more fiery one the more outgoing one um and then they you know, the, the, what they expect from the other person in the relationship, if they're ascendant, or I mean, um, if this, that person's descendant is Libra, they would expect their partner to be maybe more relatively passive or more of a follower of them. So there's sort of a clear leader follower relationship here. Um, or it could just be that the Aries rising person sees themselves as being more outgoing and they might like someone relatively more easygoing or just mellow. Um, you know, someone more mild mannered or, or just tempered than they are. And then vice versa for someone with Libra rising, they might see themselves as the more easygoing person and they want someone to maybe be more outgoing or fiery or spontaneous or something like that. And so, you know, with all these dynamics, there's a yin yang type of opposites attract sort of thing. And again, um, I just want to say just because someone has ascendant in Aries or Libra, it doesn't necessarily mean that the other person's ascendant descendant axis is going to line up with that. So I just want to make that clear. Um, and then let's go through Taurus Scorpio. So, uh, so the Taurus, the person, let's just say, so someone with ascendant in Taurus, um, and descendant in Scorpio, they'll see themselves more as the maybe more sheltered person or the more, I want to say like more mainstream and the Scorpio person would be the more, you know, the weird one or the creative one, the, the outsider or the, the more like dangerous one, or, you know, the, um, something like that, the more weird provocative person in contrast to the more mainstream person. Um, and I also think that Scorpio would be the leader or the decider here. Um, both are very fixed. So both would be very committed and both would be very, maybe expecting um sort of a what's the word a little bit of a possessive relationship where both um want that kind of closeness and that consistency uh but again the taurus ascendant person would would be attracted to someone else who's kind of provocative or maybe weird or maybe counterculture while they might be a little bit more mainstream and then likewise the scorpio if the person's a scorpio rising you know they would see themselves as being more uh, weird or quirky or, uh, creative 
or you know into just weird counterculture things and then the other person's more maybe just more stable and more chill and just kind of what you see is what you get type of thing you know and both could be attracted to the other one for those qualities that Taurus likes Scorpio because they're provocative and weird and they have an alternative to what's like normal but then Scorpio is attracted to Taurus because it's it's um, simple it's reliable it's easy to understand and, and it's sort of it's very grounding for the Scorpio if that makes sense uh, again Gemini rising which I kind of touched on since that's my one uh, Gemini would be attracted to Sagittarius so Gemini would expect Sagittarius probably to be the initiator like usually there's one of these that's more the initiator I think of the six pairings Gemini and Sagittarius have the most in common so both are very um, very much about free will and spontaneity and just having fun and stuff like that and so so this would be a less um, committed relationship just because neither one wants the other one to feel obligated both really value you know um, expression and freedom and stuff like that so so they both want like an adventure and they want variety too so um, so they again they have a lot in common both both would be attracted to a partner who is very versatile or has you know very many is sort of multifaceted so they have different aspects of their personality that are that there's some contrast there um, you know both are kind of intellectual but it Gemini is more logical, so Sagittarius might be the one who's more emotional or passionate, and also the one who's more confident or outgoing, where Gemini would be, I guess, a little bit of a leader, but again, both are uh, very individualistic, um, but Gemini would be maybe the more observing one, and Sagittarius would be the more outgoing one. Uh, cancer and Capricorn. So Cancer Rising would want a partner who is responsible and reliable. Um, and the Capricorn Rising would want a partner who is nurturing and, you know, warm. So, um, and this sort of, this sort of, it makes you think that Cancer Rising could almost be attracted to like an older man, someone who's like more responsible, like the daddy of the relationship, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. It could be, um, you know, the gender or age don't really matter um i mean the cancer rising could be an older male and the capricorn rising could be a, a younger female too but what matters is you know if the younger female was the more responsible one and the more practical one and the older man was the more emotionally nurturing one that's that's the dynamic here um yeah capricorn you know cancer doesn't really like to be in charge of things necessarily it, it doesn't mind having someone else um make sure that everything's running smoothly and and what cancer brings to the table is more of just the emotional nurturing um, to the capricorn okay leo aquarius so a little bit similar to aries libra i think just because leo would be the more spontaneous spontaneous one um the more fiery one the more passionate one the more um yeah spontaneous spontaneous so just um doing whatever they feel at that moment and kind of being like the star in a way um, kind of maybe hogging all the attention a little bit, but Aquarius would not mind that so much. Aquarius would kind of like taking the backseat almost just a little bit, just because they like being the observer and they like just going through the fun with the Leo. Um, so Aquarius would would just would like showering the Leo with the, uh, attention sometimes. And both do have a lot in common. Both are fixed. So again, with the, with the fixed signs, um, it would be more more committed and more um, possessive so they want that consistency um but with this it's the yang fixed sign so they're they're both kind of wanting maybe like a party or to be more active kind of like gemini sag or aries libra to some extent um you know both would be a little bit extroverted or wanting to go out and have adventures and stuff like that but again since leo is fire and, and aquarius is air aquarius would be more of the observer and so that's where you know, if I had to pick one to be the initiator, it'd probably be Leo or, um, you know, both would be very independent and individualistic, but if it really comes down to it, I think Leo would be more of the decider and more of the initiator. Um, yeah, so Leo wants someone who is maybe more just cool than they are, more mellow, um, someone consistent. And Aquarius wants someone consistent too, but someone who's more fiery, more... Um, 
spontaneous or creative or just energetic. Um, then Virgo Pisces. So Virgo rising is this, so this reminds me a little bit of Taurus Scorpio again because you have Earth Water. So Virgo would be the more responsible one, the more maybe sheltered or um, like mainstream, I guess, yeah, and just kind of be the one taking care of business and and making sure everything's running smoothly. But but they're attracted to someone more creative or different, someone you know weird or someone who has big dreams type of thing. And that's where you get the Pisces descendant coming in. Um, yeah, they want someone to kind of shake things up or also someone to be emotionally nurturing because that's another theme where the earth rising wants someone more emotionally nurturing. And then if it's a water rising, so like Pisces rising, they want someone grounding. Um, so Pisces rising is, you know, is the creative one, is the um, more emotional one. And maybe the more emotionally nurturing one, but they want someone grounding who can be maybe more responsible and making sure, you know, the day-to-day -day things are going along well. And and someone just to kind of to ground them, like I said, to um, be sensible or to, like, explain things, I guess, in a way that they can understand. Um, both are mutable and both are yin, so both are easygoing and understanding. Both might be, like, good listeners maybe. Um, both would be flexible and, um, you know, maybe want a partner. Both are introverted, and, and this is probably the most introverted axis, I think. So, um, again, it, it totally depends on what is going on in the rest of the chart, but just as for this relationship and the ascendant descendant axis, uh, it would be of a more temperate or more kind of just calm atmosphere. They would want that, um, that that calmness to feel comfortable with their partner and yeah so that pretty much just sums it up but uh i just want to go into how um like you can combine two different because like i said like in any relationship most um it is possible to have one person's ascendant be the other person's descendant and then vice versa and that works really well but again most relationships probably aren't going to be like that so you're combining two different axes. So let's just say uh, one person's Aries rising with Libra descendant and another person is Gemini rising with Sagittarius descendant. Like that would work well because um, one person has fire ascendant, air descendant, and then the other person has air ascendant, fire descendant. So it's, it's not an exact opposite pair, but it's similar to where, you know, one person would be the more fiery one, the um, Aries rising, the, the one who kind of wants to be the leader. And then the Gemini rising would be the one who's kind of happy going with the flow and maybe kind of um, letting Aries initiate. And, and Gemini rising can, some can be very outgoing, but some can also be shy. So they might actually like Aries kind of taking the lead in a way. Um, so again, that's just an example of combining two different polarities where it, it would kind of work out. The um, the Sagittarius descendant of the Gemini would be similar to Aries in that um, Gemini would have a more fiery, adventurous partner um, to keep them interested and, and keep them, I don't know, keep the relationship interesting and fun and, and um, fiery, I guess. Or you could also, it doesn't even have to be combining, t um, like that example was all fire and air. It doesn't even have to necessarily be like that. Because again, you have to take all the, both of both people's like the rest of their charts um, into account, especially their personal planet. So, so let's say someone is Cancer rising with Capricorn descendant, and another person is okay. So this will be a little bit more tricky. So let's say the other person is Leo rising with Aquarius descendant. So just looking at that, it doesn't seem like they'd be compatible, but they very well could be. So for example, uh, let's say. Let's say the Leo rising has a stellium in Capricorn, like, and um, you know that would very well satisfy the Cancer rising Capricorn descendant person because, you know, it, that would, to me would be a clear indication where they would be very compatible because, although the Leo rising Aquarius descendant doesn't really match up with the Cancer rising axis, um, the Leo rising person's Capricorn stellium would totally fulfill the boxes or, you know, check that box for the cancer rising person. So, the, so the Leo rising Capricorn stellium person w would be, um, more responsible and kind of a leader and maybe almost like a business person. I feel like they would like to take charge and, 
um, I don't know, be the initiator and just make sure everything's running smoothly. Be the more responsible one, I guess. And so that would make Cancer feel safe and secure. Both would be very committed. Um, the Leo rising with the Capricorn Stellium would want consistency and stability and, and commitment and, you know, wouldn't mind feeling obligated and that would, would make them feel safe. So, so that would totally, you know, fulfill the needs of the Cancer rising. And let's say, um, let's see, did... Is that, let me just make sure that all works. Let's say the Cancer Rising Capricorn um, descendant person has like Venus and Mars and Aquarius, for example. You know, that would totally fulfill the um, Leo Rising person, probably, to some extent. Especially if you had like Moon or Mercury there as well. Um, then again, you know, you've got, even though the ascendants and descendants don't match up, you've got enough planets in the signs. Or even, let's just say, can the Cancer Rising person had a lot of planets just in air signs in general. They're just an airy person with Cancer Rising and Capricorn descended. That would totally fill the um, Leo Rising Aquarius descendant. Because, the, you know, because the Leo Rising Aquarius descendant just wants someone kind of airy or maybe provocative or um, just just something similar to Aquarius. So, um, so if the Cancer Rising person was very airy, that would pretty much fulfill that. Um, yeah, so I hope that makes sense. It's, it's really a simple thing. So hopefully I didn't make it more complicated than it is, but, uh, yeah, it's just a really simple, it always works pretty much. And, um, it's just a really great, simple trick for determining compatibility and just gaining insight on relationships. And, um, yeah, I just think it's good to know just, it's just interesting to see what you're attracted to, but also what you need in a relationship because, because it is both. It's, um, it's not just what you find attractive, it's also what you really need long term. Um, you know, I would say Venus and Mars are more just what you're attracted to, but not necessarily what you need long term. And then, you know, maybe Moon would be kind of both, I guess. But yeah, this just really works for both. So, so anyway, hope that was interesting and thanks for watching.